In this video, I'll show you how to optimize your high poly scenes by recreating Nanite in Blender using geometry nodes. So let's go ahead and make our own Nanite node in Blender. So I'll set my camera here. I'm gonna drag in the mesh that I wanna practice on. I'll drag in this wall that I made from some photogrammetry. You can find a tutorial on how I process photogrammetry for concept art here. But for now, let's click on this little drop down and hit G to get into the Geo Nodes workspace. We'll go new and just for fun, we'll call it Nanite. So I'm set up and ready to go. And the first thing I wanna do is a merge by distance. And let's just turn on wireframe mode here so we can see what we're doing. So you'll see as soon as I bump this number up, it's gonna merge the vertices together based on the distance is do a merge by distance node. You'll see if I bump this up to something like 0.1, it's significantly reduced already. The next thing I want to do is to be able to drive this value based on the distance between this object and this camera. So let's grab an object info node, set that to camera. I'll drag this out, type in proximity for a geometry proximity node. And then what I want is the distance from the camera into the distance from the merge by distance. So at the moment, we're seeing this red line here because for this to work, Blender needs some actual geometry to reference. So instead of using the camera, I'm just gonna type in cube. So I'm gonna plug this cube into the geometry and I'm gonna take the location of the camera into sample position. I'm gonna hit this to relative so that it calculates relative to the two. And now you'll see it's scaling a little bit, but the reason that's not working is because this distance needs to be between a value of zero and one. So the perfect node for that is a map range node. And basically I want to convert the minimum and maximum distance values into a zero to one scale. So let's say my minimum distance would say, let's start reducing it from a meter, from between a meter and 50 meters, just to start with. So you'll see now, as I drag this closer or further away, it's decimating. So I'm, I might want this to stay high res up to 10 meters. And then you can basically tweak the amount you want it to decimate by sending this to a higher value. So let's say 500 meters. And I'll just drag this out and see. And let's just check it. I'm gonna duplicate this out into the distance. And you can see here, as we're going further back, it's dynamically decimating the object here. So what you wanna do is I've just turned wireframe off now. I'm gonna go into render preview. And we can see already that even though we know there's some decimation happening back into the y-axis there, there's actually a very minimal visual difference. And again, if there is a visual difference, feel free to tweak these values. So let's go 700 instead. I will turn wireframe back on and we'll test. So the one at the back, 9K tries. The one at the front, 127,000 tries. So let's save this node because we want to be able to use this at any point in the future. So we'll just click on the object and we'll click on this little icon, right click and mark as asset. You save this scene file wherever your Blender asset library is stored on your PC. So I'll do that now. And now if I click on this icon here and hit A, that'll bring me into my asset library. And if I go up the top here and go to current file, I'll find my Nanite and then I can drag it into the folder that I would like. So I'm gonna drag this into tools. And the last thing I'll do before we jump into a new scene to test it, I just wanna come back into the geo nodes and hit X on this camera. And that'll basically clear that slot. And then let's go into a new scene and test it. So I'm in my new scene here and let's drag in some rock assets. So great, I have a lot of meshes in here now. If I hit A to select all, with a mesh selected last, we'll see that we've got 5 million try count. So let's go to tools. We'll find the nanite modifier that we saved. I'm just gonna drag it onto this mesh. It should show up here. Now for some reason, this has a sub D applied. I think it might be because there's a displacement material. So I'm gonna be brave and leave that there. Well, what I'm gonna do is shift G and select by type to select all my meshes. I'll select my rock that has the nanite modifier applied last and I'm just going to hit Control L and copy modifiers or P. So let me just go through and check. So we've got that assigned and now inside the geo nodes 
we set the camera. So the reason I didn't drag this into the group output is because if I selected it in here, I select the camera, you'll see that it has applied the Nanite modifier to this mesh. We'll just test that. Yes, but it hasn't applied that to anything else. Those are still empty. So I'm just going to undo. We'll leave that empty. And now if we go and just select the camera in the modifier, it'll apply it to the whole scene. And there we go. We can see it at work already. So let's select everything by type again. And you can see already we've reduced it to 1.9 million. So let's move this camera somewhere close to a rock. And the first thing you'll notice is that now that everything's hooked up, my scene is quite laggy. And this is because Blender is recalculating that decimate relative to the camera every time I move the camera. So a quick fix for that, if you want to reposition your camera, you can just hit X on the modifier again and go into our camera, camera to view. And now it's quite snappy again. Alternatively, you could select all of those meshes and apply the modifier if you're happy with it. So let's tweak this. I'll go back in here, select my camera, and let's just say if I wanted these at the back to be decimated even further, I would just reduce this number. So let's bring it down to 500. And you can see it's lower already. Select by type again, and we're down to a million tries. Let's go into camera view, turn wireframe off, and I'll just render it. And now let's check visual quality with and without Nanite. So this is with. I hit X to make it without. And for all intents and purposes, these two shots are visually the same. But our Nanite one has been optimized. So for a final test, let's do a side-by-side -side render comparison. So I'm going to undo that. So no Nanite, basically. And I'm just going to hit render. So without Nanite, we're at 10.39 seconds. Let's turn Nanite on. Render again. 8.98 seconds. So it's a small gain, but could potentially prove useful, especially when you're rendering a large number of frames. So that's it, folks. I hope you found that useful. And if you'd like access to some free photo scans models from the previous video, you can sign up to my mailing list and get the scene file and assets for free. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. I'll see you next time.